we've done is we've introduced a framework, and this framework is called directed improvisation. And what this does is it actually introduces a, 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 and removes a, the bureaucracy typically that exists at a, at a corporate level on down. And as well, we've introduced um, the ability for our local representatives in 600 plus stores to innovate um, at their level and solve problems at their level in absence of direction or process or governance from our point of view. Now, uh, that's also co accompanied by, by um, a, a multi-dimensional framework, um, which means that we will also be doing um, business analyst, um, analysis, excuse me, data analytics, uh, machine learning from the side. And with those three things, we have a build, measure, learn mentality. In that, that's kind of the classic uh, lean loop approach. And that allows us to actually roll out uh, very frequently at, at, the, at the store level, individual level, um, changes, not on a quarterly basis, not on a monthly basis, but on a daily basis. We have uh, an approach where we where we think about two things and two things only. Um, and typically the answer is customers uh, is one of them. Actually in this case it's uh, stakeholders matter, customers fit in there, and technology matters. Um, when it comes to stakeholders, we have to have, I in particular, have many stakeholders I have to deal with, revenue assurance, finance, uh, commercial, sales operations, and so on. Um, having a tight, collaborative relationship, especially when we've got the ability to respond to markets so quickly, matters. Technology matters as well because we have to be able to uh, respond through those technologies as a means to those same customers and stakeholders. And when you think about it like that, I have to have continuous integration, continuous innovation, continuous development, all these things real time, near real time, to be able to actually introduce change on a, on a frequent basis. When it comes to change at the speed at which we were able to move, at the pace we were able to move, um, we uh, learned that our stakeholders could not move as quickly as us. Normally, that's not the case. Uh, normally, we are usually far lagging and responding to requirements and working things out and getting clarifications and stepping forward. Uh, now, we can move at the pace and speed of ideas. And what that meant is that uh, we had to be so tightly integrated and collaborative with our stakeholders that, that um, when we, and not only that, and I, if I could take a step back, when we were working with those same stakeholders, they also had to be flexible in modifying their business processes to allow us to, to move at the pace we wanted to move at. I'm assuming that our stakeholders and our group of communities, especially in Europe, understand the concept of credit checks when it comes to postpaid service offerings and device subsidies. Uh, we uh, faced some challenges around this because our, our we were a smaller organization, we're now the fourth largest carrier. and. Um, we didn't. We were quite risk averse when it came to the costs that could be associated with fraud. So, our rate of saying no to a given customer activation or interaction was very high. And the challenge we were given is we were told, "Please find a way to say yes more often." And what that did was that we introduced a concept called credit criteria transparency. Now. Taking a step back, with our customer base, when you say no more often, obviously that's a high amount of friction. You can do things like be clever and take deposits, have a credit class matrix where you can say yes more gently, drive them towards prepaid, etc. Um, that's still a form of saying no, and especially if a customer wants to be able to walk out of a, a, a store with a zero dollar cost and a two thousand dollar device, that's a huge amount of risk on us as a telco and a carrier. So. We introduced that, that credit criteria transparency, and what that is is that's actually um, a value exchange in conversation between the customer and the customer-facing agent or the retail agent. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Um, typically, uh, what would happen is the conversation will go like this. Can you share an email address? They would get an email address. We, if we can validate that email address, the business process would be, okay, we validate the email just so now we can market to them, we can do certain things, and we're now we're willing to give them a $50, a $50 subsidy. 
Now, if we can validate that email address within our ecosystem of uh, partner companies and our parent organization, that may actually be worth another hundred dollars. And over time, what you're doing is you're you're, you're providing transparency to the, the to the customer, where the customer is saying, "I get it now. The more I give, the more I get." It's as simple as that. You don't have to necessarily go all the way to credit check, which is a, a, almost like a mortgage level interaction where I need a whole bunch of details about you. Um, but you get to a point where it's actually quite valuable. Now, uh, there are a couple of other examples in that, but the point is that there is a point in time where the risk diminishes, but the value is there and there's an inflection point. And that inflection point equals customers saying, I'm good, let's do this. You've given me enough value where I'm willing to, to do this and, and pay you the money that, that I need to pay you in order to reduce your risk. And suddenly, You've avoided and averted that lunch bag let down conversation, which is, I'm sorry, you're going to have to give me $1,800 for this iPhone when you thought you were going to get it for $0. Now, it's simple as that. Done.